Middle East and bureaucrats running Australia everywhere into the ground. The dysfunction and deficit, the budgets and blowouts, the present war in Afghanistan, the next war in Iran, the war on terror, the panic over power bills, the ever-widening national obesity crisis, and the sheer horror of another big brother. <laughs> and may I Thank say, you. Thank you. may I say how inspiring it is in these anxious times to see that there are enough of you still panning creeps and laying up gold dust to fill the room. <laughs> This inaugural awards dinner is in association with AHA Investor Magazine and its wonderful founder and publisher who is here with us tonight, Mike Woodcock. Thank you, Mike. Give Mike a round of applause for supporting tonight. Hey, Mike. Where is Mike? I can't see you. Are you here, Mike? Where is You're at the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you are. Oh, I see you. Yes, yes. Well, you can keep everyone quiet up the back. That would be a great help. Thanks, Mike. Now, as you may have noticed, we are at Luna Park and not as our foreign guests may have understandably thought in Parliament House, <laughs> where they also have big lights and they will take you for a ride. <laughs> for one thing, Parliament House does not boast of Goldilocks, the golden python. I'm sorry I missed that, who launched the fabled Pamp Gold Bar in preparation for the 2013 year of the snake. Parliament House is the other herpetarium, <laughs> with plenty of snakes in the grass and plenty of trouser snakes too, it seems. <laughs> also, someone would have stolen the gold bar. <laughs> for another thing, you would have had to come to Luna Park to hear the speech by Richard Kahn with the ex entitled Boundless Absurdity, Thy Name is Bureaucracy, and it was a wonderful address, Richard. As I said, I'm sorry I wasn't here for all the speakers, but I caught Richard's, and it was important, and it was disturbing, very disturbing. And I just want to say that our government is, um, has its own, it promised to cut red tape too when they came in, and um, since they've come in, they've introduced 1,800 new regulations and they've actually abolished 56. So they've cut red tape, they've cut red tape into lots of little, little bits of red tape to wrap around everyone's necks. Now, I appreciate that these are nervous times, but nervous times are boom times for gold. When savers are rattled and currencies crumble, when war and pestilence and death and famine saddle up and everyone flees for the border, they like to take a little bit of gold with them. <laughs> there is a little uneasiness about China, for example, because China, for no sane reason, has suddenly switched from building bridges and power stations and nuclear submarines to building investment properties. This is a little bit like a successful proctologist who has made his millions staring into the void, who suddenly makes a midlife crisis decision to invest his millions in musical theatre, or thinks that it can't be hard to run a coffee shop and so blows the lot. Because the Chinese have built perfect facsimiles of an English Tudor village, um, an English Tudor market town, a Wild West cattle town, and idyllic French and German villages as seen on TV, and for all we know, an identical facsimile of Aubrey. <laughs> and no one wants to live in them. And by no one, I mean the 200 million eager nostalgics who are meant to buy them. This is a little bit similar to what caused the last GFC. Only Lupia and a Chinese GFC will make the last GFC look like a bunch of bucket of KFC. <laughs> Plus China seems to want a South China Seas war with Japan, which will make P&O cruisers a very bearish option. <laughs> but the good news is that even though China is already the la world's largest gold producer, they are buying up the stuff by the barrow load. Gold 
is Australia's second biggest export to China. That's right. The Chinese don't have to come to Australia and dig for the stuff and get chased by angry and unpleasant Irishmen <laughs> the way they did during the original gold rush. No, you wrap it up nicely and send it to them express. <laughs> and okay, Turkey seems to be at war with Syria, which is also at war with Syria. <laughs> Just another little surprise that the Arab Spring has sprung. While Iran is simultaneously building nukes and painting a large target on its own roof. And the EU, which was founded on the ruins of a cluster of warring nation states, has become another cluster of warring nation states. The tax paying states are seizing the governments of the tax dodging states. And the Greeks are suing the Germans for reparations from the last war to tide them over in case Germany starts another one with banks instead of tanks. For the price of a holiday house in Spain, you can now buy Spain. <laughs> and of course Australia, Australia really is nothing like Greece, but only because we don't use a barter system involving goats and wine made from cheese. Trees! <laughs> Trees! And the French have decided to tax rich people at 75%, which means that next year they won't have any rich people <laughs> or any money. And their barter system will be based on regional cheeses. This will distress no one but the Germans, but happily no one minds very much because if Germany goes kaput, this will cause widespread rejoicing and optimism across Greece and recovery will be underway once again. <laughs> Meanwhile, look at Italy. The Italian government may be broke, but the Italian people are prosperous and happy because they take only cash and they don't tell anyone about that. <laughs> Especially the Germans. And even more excitingly, in England, a fossica with a child-sized metal detector has stumbled on the second largest hoard of Roman gold coins ever discovered. For a thousand years, the history of Europe was of people hiding gold because the Romans were coming, or the Romans whole hiding gold because the Goths were coming, and the EU must be covered with the stuff, just under the topsoil, and it could be theirs for the price of a $19.95 toy. <laughs> And okay, the United States has been warned by Moody that unless they get the next election right, the USA will lose its triple A rating. And the US debt is now expressed in figures that we used to employ to tell the little children how many stars were in the sky. And you'll be paying it all back. <laughs> But American optimism always bounces out of bed due to their high sugar levels. <laughs> you have to admire a nation in the middle of which, in the middle of a recession, invests and produces and markets millions of drones, some the size of horseflies, which can do anything from destroying entire cities to locating lost chihuahuas. A country which has now developed a bear spray. Yes, a simple, attractively packaged aerosol which fits in your handbag and repels wild bears. Those Americans, these Americans are risk takers and toy makers and both lead to success. Now there is some concern that President Romney wants a strong dollar and President Obama wants to go on printing dollars like Kleenex. But the past decades have taught Americans once again the basic principles of the gold market, which are A, gold is the best investment when politicians screw up, B, if you get a president who does not screw up, just wait, another one will come along who will, and C, real estate is not the only alternative. Yes, everyone has lots to worry about except you. <laughs> Rust never sleeps, and gold never rusts. Gold seems to be the only game in town where the house and the punters 
both win. Tonight, we celebrate you because the Australian mining industry, of which gold miners are the quiet achievers, as well as the happiest, <laughs> makes such an enormous contribution to our economy. And in fact, there's an argument that you are the economy. As a civilian who recognizes that the mining industry is the only thing between us and a recession and another federal and a federal government tax on grieving, <laughs> I would like to thank you. Now before we break for entree, and in the interest of health and safety, I'd like to do a little light housekeeping. The toilets are located out there, so are the exits. Please do not confuse the two. <laughs> it is unsafe to use the toilet as an exit and unhealthy to use the exit as a toilet. <laughs> For those of you who wish to smoke, you're quite welcome to go to Wollongong. <laughs> and as a courtesy to our speakers, please turn your mobile phones to silent and only answer them if it's a babysitter and her boyfriend can't find the corkscrew. <laughs> This evening is not only a celebration of you and another gold rush, it is also an opportunity to enjoy fine food and wine and to meet old friends and make new friends and to, and to steal one another's secrets when the conversation grows incautious. <laughs> to that end, we're going to break for entree. Thank you. Bon appétit.